We've been climbing around the hills of Palos Verdes, California, a beautiful neighborhood. Just get some nice shots of this hill that we climbed. And I've been riding the Outlaw E45. And the 45 stands for 45 kilometers per hour. They have this bike in Europe as well. 45 kilometers per hour translates to speed pedelec 28 miles per hour. So it's a really cool bike. You know, they've, they've managed to squeeze a lot of power, a whole lot of capacity into this battery pack for about $4,000, $39.99, right? It's like that magical marketing number. And I've really enjoyed it. Like, I think I only have a couple complaints and I'm gonna start with those. Not a huge fan of these Welgo platform pedals like this. I, I like the bigger ones with like the, the nubs. This one has like the rubber grip. I know a lot of people take them off and put on their own pedals and stuff, but it's, you know, it's close. They're decent. They're better than the cages. They're a little bit tougher. And there's no rack bosses back here. And considering that this is a hard tail, I think it would be really cool if it, if it could have a rack. Yes, you can put one on here on the seat post and hang it off the back, you know, but they get bumped side to side and then you've got the panniers and it's just hanging, it's, it's not as tough. And considering that this is fast and it's pretty comfortable with that suspension, um, I kind of wish that they'd had that. that. That would be a nice feature. These are the nice folks that let us, you know, film. Um, because, you know, it's, it's a nice neighborhood and we wanted to get the beautiful views and stuff. And it's just, it's been a blast riding around, um, actually testing out some of the other Bulls bikes. And this one is one of the most powerful that I've, that I've tried in the speed pedal -like category. It uses a really unique drive system. Um, it's got this like human electro synergy components branding, but it's really from SR Suntour. And you can see down here the tag, it says 500 watts. Um, rated at 15 amps, but it's it's offering 80 newton meters of torque. Okay, by comparison, we've got a Bosch powered bike over there that's got uh, it's the CX and it's 75 newton meters. They, they're both powerful. They both made it and stuff. But I was going a little faster on this one, and just the hub motor, it's pretty smooth. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're shifting gears or anything because it's completely separate. Uh, there, this is a paddle assist only electric bike. There's no throttle or anything, but just kind of kind of neat. And they've still managed to keep a lot of the weight in that battery pack forward and relatively low. They've even sloped this top tube a whole lot. So the standover height isn't, you know, isn't too extreme. And then they've reinforced it here. This almost acts like a handle. The battery is locking, it's removable. It works pretty well. Um, I was weighing it earlier. I think it's almost like 10 pounds. So it's heavy, 48 volts. I believe it's um, 675 watt hours, so quite a, quite a range. They estimate like 60-ish miles or something. I bet you could at least get 35 on this, depending on how you're riding, because it is pedal assist again. You know, there are four levels of assist, and you know, it's measuring your torque and cadence. So what I found is that you do have to work a little bit, um, and apparently those sensors are in the bottom bracket. But when you're pedaling, it's not like it, I, I didn't feel like. I was pushing quite as hard as on some other bikes, like the impulse system. It's a little bit of a weaker drive system. Um, and I'm trying to think of some others. Easy Motion has the torque sensor, so does Stromer. It's a similar feel to that, like really fluid, but a little bit more noise, kind of an electronic whir going on, and definitely a more, more powerful feel given how light and compact this geared motor is versus a gearless. So there's no regenerative braking like you've got on some Stromers and stuff, but you know the price is pretty low, and then we're looking at I think about 57 uh, pounds on this. So, you know, a lot of those other bikes are in the 60 plus pound range. So you're definitely saving in some cases five pounds. It is noticeable. And by shifting that weight forward into the, the down tube area, it, it actually handles really well. So I'm, I've been impressed. Also love that they've got these 203 millimeter hydraulic brakes, Tektro Dorado. So these are e-bike specific, but you might notice that they don't have any motor inhibitors like there's no brake lever inhibitors and that's because this is such a, a fancy like kind of an upgraded torque cadence sensing system so i i do like that it's it's been pretty just responsive i guess is the best way to to say you know sometimes i've complained on easy motion bikes that they have that plate the tmm4 torque sensor some of the older neo and evo bikes and if the chain bounces or even if the frame flexes you're sort of bending that torque sensor and it, it can kind of respond when you don't want it to. Even if you're over tightening your axle, 
that can that can kind of change the characteristics whereas this one it's all up here and it seems really consistent to me so far i love that there's a plastic chain guide keeps that chain on track when you're riding at higher speeds potentially bouncier given that you've got these fat tires i think they're you know 650b 27.5 by 2.4 definitely wider I guess another gripe is I wish it had like reflective sidewalls because I've seen other Schwabby tires that do. These are the Supermoto X and they do have green guards so they're meant to be puncture resistant and, and that's a good thing when you have a heavier bike and you're commuting potentially. I love that there's this hollow spindle at the bottom, just kind of a lightweight, nicer component. And then back here, we've got the Shimano SLX. That's like one of the highest component groups from Shimano and when this thing coasts you can hear it like zzzz. it's not like click 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 it's it's like it means that you can pedal like more immediately it, there's there's like finer gaps for the hub to 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 kind of like connect I guess is what I'm saying so I've got more details on the actual like chain ring teeth and and the gears back at the site but it's a nice component um I saw this neoprene wire wrap over here and I was like oh maybe there's a slap guard no, it's got just got a sticker slap guard, which is probably good enough on this side. While well, we're talking about axles, 12 millimeter through axle in the rear, 15 in the front. It says Maxwell right there. Pretty easy to line those up, really stiff, and that's going to help just with handling and with getting those disc brakes to, to sit properly and stuff. I, I like that. Being able to take off both wheels, that's something that's awesome on a hub motor driven electric bike. Like again, over here, we've got one that's mid-drive and it's always like yay you can take the wheels off easily well this one this one meets that it, it definitely lives up to some of these higher expectations um i think it's you know the price and everything is is kind of right i think it's 31.6 millimeter seat post you could replace that do a thud buster a body float if you wanted to smooth it out but with these bigger tires and again that suspension fork i think this is like 150 millimeter travel on this thing uh revolution from rock shocks and we've got kind of a rebound adjust at the bottom, compression up top so you can effectively lock it out so you're not losing any momentum with, with Bob. Locking grips from Ergon, pretty nice. And then Pro Logo seat. So a, just a lot of really cool, cool features. I was taking the battery off earlier and the way that it connects, there's actually like a two-step process. You put the key in and then you slide this little lever and it unclips and you, you kind of like pull it out from the side. So to put it back on, you like, you know, hit the down tube and then click and it clicks up so it's kind of unique design but while we're over here check it out this is the magnetic cap for the energy bus charging standard so it's both a communications port and a charging port and you know it's the kind of charger like a macbook or something if you trip over the cable it pulls out it doesn't bend the the wire the pins or anything like that so just again high-end stuff all across this bike and you you know it's still a four thousand dollar bike but you could easily spend a lot more than that on some of the other bikes Okay, so I noticed that there's like a button on off on the battery, but it's like I didn't, it didn't matter if I click that, the display stays on. So in order to operate the bike, uh, you just press the power button on the display and it comes on. You can charge devices on this. There's like a little um, mini USB right down here and then the display is removable. So check that out. It's awesome when you can like park your bike at a rack, not worry about the display getting messed up, people tampering with it, or even just the sun shining on it all day and the rain and stuff. So this this reminds me of like the Bosch Intuvia interface. Um, and and at the same time, like the impulse display, it's, it's kind of compact, gets a lot of good readouts. So let's power it back on. Here we press that on button. Lots of different feedback right here. So we've got battery level. And at first I was like, man, there's only four little bars. That's that's not very detailed. But then if you hit the I button over here, you can get to battery percentage. Love that. So it's 87%. Four bars, but 87%. Awesome. Speed, kilometers per hour. Wasn't able to figure out how to go to miles per hour. And maybe that's not even available on this one. Um, sorry, hard to say. Check the instructions. Uh, if we hit I again, we go to total distance and trip distance. So we got a few different things. There's a little light icon, and if you press this light button, it, it turns on backlighting. The interesting thing to me is that the light icon goes away when backlighting turns on. So it's like, huh, I wonder why that is. And then, of course, there is uh, the different levels of assist. There are four of them. So you can go to none, just use this as a cycle computer, eco, tour, climb, or sport. And I've been doing climb and sport and just again like accelerating up these extreme hills i hope you can tell like how look at the look at the houses like look at the angle and then the street this is really steep this whole thing we came all the way from way down there 
it's just awesome what you can do with this and just how easy it is to reach that button pad there is walk assist it only works if you're an eco tour climber sport not in no but you know that helps you if you have a backpack on you're walking with a friend but you don't want to have to push this you know 57 pound bike it can walk itself at a slower speed and then i think kind of the crown jewel of the design of of this motor is this big plate back here Okay, so we're talking about the big disc brakes. It dissipates heat. It gives you more leverage for braking. So the bigger the disc, kind of the more powerful. Uh, but th then there's this plate. And at first I was like, is that for the brake? Like a heat sink or something? Like it's, it looks like a heat sink. You can even see the blades from the side. That's actually for the motor. So that's like a heat pipe and then heat sink out here. Um, and maybe the rotor even creates like a fan, like kind of a suction or something. I, I don't know. It gets my imagination going for sure. But that's designed to help it not overheat because hub motors that's one of the challenges it's like oh it's compact and it kind of blends in and it's small and but then how do you get rid of the heat so a lot of these other bikes i've been talking about like the specialized turbo bikes some of the early ones the stromer bikes they'll have like gearless hub motors they're much bigger and they've got magnets all around the edge this one has gears and stuff and so the motor's spinning at an even higher rpm and then it's sort of down converting that into torque um so what do they do with all that heat? Well, that's their solution, this heat sink. Uh, and I think that's really cool. I haven't had any problems overheating. And again, I've been like, yeah, I'm not like the heaviest guy in the world. I'm only like 135 pounds or something, but still being able to climb these hills pretty fast is awesome, is awesome. And then stop yourself. So I'm a fan. I think that's a pretty good overview. Might just hop on this thing and climb that hill right now. We'll see what we can do. Okay, oh, and I love that it has a kickstand because so many times there's like, there's no kickstands going on. Does it actually come with this kickstand or did you guys just add that? He's saying, oh, we, we changed the screws because, you know, they send these around. This is a demo bike. Um, but yeah, it comes with this great kickstand. And look, it's far enough back. All the time I'm like walking my bike backwards in the garage. And then look, the pedal doesn't hit the kickstand. That's a win right there. Okay, do that. I'm gonna start climbing. You'll notice that like, even though it's a torque sensor, it doesn't engage if I'm just resting my foot here because it also requires cadence feedback. But it is pretty responsive. It's not like there's a delay. Um, and then there's this like electronic whine from this that reminds me of a Prius or something. It's a little bit more pronounced or just, I guess it's just a different sound. Like every motor has a different sound. Bulls, Bosch, Impulse. Impulse is probably one of the quietest, but it's also, you know, kind of weaker. Um, so here we go. And up here on the display you can see there's even like a little power gauge that's kind of going up and down and you can see it like as I pedal and exert myself that gauge goes up and down so it's pretty smart it's not just on or off and now I'm pedaling slower with less force and it's responding I mean that's that's awesome okay let's check out where we came from way down there that is incredible to me and I'm holding a camera, my knees don't feel bad. Now the disc brakes are being put to action, but you hopefully you could kind of hear that. There is, there is a little bit more noise. Okay, get ready to climb. You can hear the nice uh, drivetrain here.
This time I'm gonna use a lower assist level. I feel like it's responsive, but there is a bit of a ramp down. You hear like, wow, wow. I, I imagine there's a lot of electricity flowing in a 48 volt battery and stuff. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, checking this bike out. It's It's been kind of like an ugly duckling in my mind. Like, well, what's the deal? There's the big battery pack and everything, and there's a hub motor. Like, how is that gonna work? And to speed pedal, like, I think it's utility and price-wise, this thing's really a winner. It's pretty comfortable. And, uh, you know, you get the two-year warranty um, on all the electronics and five years on the frame. So that's that's pretty awesome. For the full write-up on this, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com, some comments and photos and stuff. And of course, especially when you're riding fast, um, just be safe, maybe add some lights or something to this thing.